In this video, I'm going to show how you can use a package for R, a very popular new package called BRMS, to plot the results from a continuous uh, by continuous interaction and regression. Uh, so in regression, uh, a lot of times we, uh, we use continuous variables. Uh, we use regression when we have that type of data. Uh, and so if you have a continuous, uh, two continuous variables and they show an interaction, uh, one tendency uh, might be to like do a median split and show the um, interaction that way, but that is not the best way uh, to plot the results of an interaction. You, you lose a lot of power uh, that way, um, and so you have much more from this uh, continuous data. So I'm going to use um, data from a paper we published in my lab in 2016 uh, in Cognitive Effective and Behavioral Neuroscience. Uh, in this paper, we found an interaction between dopamine uh, as measured, dopamine affinity uh, as measured by spontaneous eye blink rate, uh, and uh, CESD scores, which are scores from a depressive symptom uh, inventory. And so um, this is what I'm going to plot uh, right here. When we did this paper uh, several years back, um, we just used Excel at the time, and so now uh, I've used uh, R more and more frequently over the past six or seven years. So I'm going to show how you can uh, recreate the same plot. So what it's showing is that uh, for high levels and moderate levels of spontaneous eye blink rate, which is our uh, putative measure of uh, striatal dopamine affinity, um, you get this stronger relationship between uh, CESD scores and performance on the Iowa gambling test. So in this test, people with more depressive symptoms uh, and if they had higher uh, EBR or a moderate level of EBR, they had a strong relationship uh, between uh, depressive symptoms and performing better on the task. So they actually did better. Um, people with more depressive symptoms did better. And we thought that was because they were better able to uh, remember the losses associated with the bad decks. Uh, but anyhow, so uh, to get to plot this, uh, I'm going to uh, have the data uh, here in this folder uh, called, uh, I just call it Psych 671 R stats. I used to use this as an example for a graduate course on regression uh, in the psychology department. Um, and so we get our working directory. Um, and so I will post this, uh, make this code available online if you want to follow along. If you follow along, you'll just have to put um, change the path so wherever you downloaded this folder uh, with this script and with the CSV file that has our data in it. Um, so if you don't have uh, these packages installed, Tidyverse and BRMS, you can unhighlight, uh, uncomment this right here and then install those packages. Uh, so I have them installed, so I'm just going to load them. Uh, and then here is where we uh, download the data. So uh, burn Norris and Worthy uh, 2016.csv. Uh, we're going to call it uh, data BNW um, 2016. We use the head command to get uh, the header row. So you see we have uh, EBR, uh, average eye blink rates, uh, I think per minute, and then CESD, and then our measure of performance in the Iowa gambling task. So this is a measure where it's the proportion of good decks that they selected minus the proportion of bad decks. So these values range between <clears throat> negative one and one. Um, so first, I will run this regression model. So we're just regressing performance on the interaction between EBR and CESD. So you use the star uh, for regression uh, in R to denote that you want the interaction, uh, all the interactions between those two variables. And so, um, and then we uh, specify what data we're running it on. Uh, and so we run it. So this is just a standard um, frequentist. Uh, statistical procedure. Uh, and so you see we got uh, a significant effect, not a huge uh, effect, uh, but a significant interaction effect. Uh, and so we can run this now with BRMS and a Bayesian model. Uh, and we could, you know, this could potentially not be like significant from a Bayesian model. Now what we look, what I look for uh, in terms of calling things effects significant is whether the 95% um, highest credible interval, whether that includes zero. So if it includes zero, 
uh, then that I consider that not significant because we can't rule out that the effect is zero. Uh, but if the 95% highest credible interval does not include zero, uh, then I consider that a significant effect. We have uh, about 95% certainty uh, or the 95% most likely values of this interaction term parameter uh, right here, uh, that coefficient, uh, they uh, don't include zero. So uh, that's what it's kind of how you interpret uh, these results from these Bayesian models. Okay, so here is the code. Uh, so you can see uh, it's basically the same thing as this up here. Okay, that's what's nice about uh, BRMS, except for uh, instead of LM, the basic R command for regression, uh, we type BRM. And then the default is uh, Gaussian or linear, so you don't need to change anything else. Um, it's just the exact same code, which is what's so nice about BRMS. So I'm also going to uh, collect the time that it's going to be uh, take to run. Uh, I've timed this before, and it's only taken about a minute and four seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and start running it, and then we'll see uh, how long it takes. Okay, so uh, you can see it's compiling the STAN program. Uh, and as a default, I just use the default settings for BRMS. They seem to work well uh, for the most part, but it runs four chains, uh, four Markov chain Monte Carlo chains, and it's just estimating the posterior distribution uh, of these, um, these coefficients from the regression model. So we'll have uh, the two lower order coefficients and then the interaction term. And so um, we'll go ahead and hope that it goes quickly. This is, uh, you know, the one drawback of BRMS is you have to wait a little bit, uh, definitely longer than you would for, say, frequentist estimates. You have to wait longer to get your estimates in BRMS. Okay, and so now you can see it's kind of done it. This is what it does a lot. It finally finishes. So uh, we can look at the time. Um, let's see. Where does it say? Let's, let's see what this says. So we run that. Uh, Fifty-eight point nine six seconds. So just about uh, just about a minute. Um, okay, and so we can look at this, and we get an estimate for the interaction term of point zero 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 five five. Let's go ahead and just for completeness sake. Uh, you can see that's you know pretty much exactly what we got uh, from the frequentist model uh, right there. So that's our summary of uh, M1. So back to the Bayesian uh, results. So uh, here is the 95% um, credible interval. Uh, and you can see that for the interaction term, it just doesn't include zero. Uh, like I said, this isn't uh, just a huge effect. Uh, we definitely could have had more power uh, in the study. Um, but let's see if we can get the actual, so I can change this, I use this print summary command to give me how many digits I want uh, in this estimate. So if I want more for this lower bound right here, let's see if six digits, yeah. So it's point uh, five zeros and then three, uh, that's the lower bound, so near zero. Uh, but still uh, not quite zero. And so, you know, you could consider this uh, significant as well. Uh, and so here is where you can get, uh, you get a significant interaction effect, but now what you really got to do is visualize it. Uh, and so here we use this nice conditional effects command. Okay, and so we uh, put the model object that we got up here, M1BRMS. And so first it's showing just the uh, marginal effects for uh, CESD on performance. So there was uh, a slight effect overall. Uh, this was pretty interesting because people, you know, high in depressive symptoms, they actually did better on this uh, decision-making task. And we think because it involves uh, avoiding long-term losses. Uh, there is the marginal effect of EBR, uh, and then you press enter again, uh, and this gets you the uh, interaction plot. Okay, and so you could compare uh, this plot to the original one that we created in uh, Excel. Uh, and it, you know, it's basically the, the same plot, uh, but I think this is a lot nicer. Um, you know, it lo definitely looks a lot nicer in R. Uh, and so now, uh, this is what the default uh, conditional effects command will get you 
from uh, BRMS and that's nice but a lot of times you kind of want to be able to customize your plots a little more uh, especially if you're trying to you know for the final paper uh, or the final manuscript that you're about to submit so this is code this code was actually from uh, my former postdoc Hillary Don uh, she uh, sent this code but um, it's really good uh, what it does is it extracts the uh, plot so it creates this uh, GG uh, value. Okay, and so now uh, we have that. Um, we can kind of uh, avoid that. Um, so we have that, and the, so now uh, we can extract each plot individually from uh, this uh, GG uh, variable. Okay, and so uh, there we go. Okay, and so now it's got uh, plot three uh, is the one that we want. So if we type uh, plot three, uh, it'll plot, reproduce the uh, third plot that conditional effects gave us, which was the interaction plot. Now this right here, these are actually two uh, colorblind palettes, so this is just something uh, optional. Uh, again, I got this code from uh, my former postdoc, and so, um, you know, it could be nice if you want to make sure that uh, people who are colorblind can uh, see the plot clearly. You can use a palette like that. And then down here, uh, we basically take plot three and then we edit it. So we add in these labels. Uh, really, you know, they're kind of already there in this case, but uh, it's nice that we can add them in. We add in these different values, uh, three different values for the three lines for um, uh, base. It's from this colorblind palette. So we didn't actually use this one, but if you play, if you get this code, you could play around with it and see if you like those colors. Uh, and then we set the theme to be black and white. That usually takes away uh, this kind of gray background that's uh, the default in ggplot. Um, so it's just, you know, again, something that's your aesthetic preference. Uh, and then um, we have this other stuff down here. So yeah, just margins for uh, the axis title. So let's see how this updated plot looks. Okay, so there is how that uh, updated plot looks. And so um, this is using uh, a palette that is um, appropriate for people who are colorblind. Uh, and so we got this uh, nice plot. You can see that it's showing, you know, the same slopes roughly as the uh, original uh, plot in the paper. But um, I think this, you know, just looks like kind of a nicer plot. And nowadays there aren't uh, color printing charges very often because so many journals are just in uh, online only form. And so you can create uh, plots with colors. A few years ago we had to worry about having uh, color in plots or else you'd have to pay, you know, several hundred dollars or, or whatever uh, for that. So anyhow, uh, hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, this is a good way, good easy way to plot interactions between uh, continuous variables and regression. If you look further down in this code, uh, I actually have some uh, code to manually plot uh, those same values. Let's see if I haven't, I didn't run this right before, but let's see if it uh, does it. You can see that it is manually uh, drawing that line. Let's see what it creates. Okay, so it creates a plot that uh, looks like that. So again, you know, it's kind of the same thing, but I think I would need to do more uh, to uh, just to, to kind of fix this plot or to make it look how I would want to. I think the previous one to me looked a little better, although this is uh, interesting code if you want to uh, overlay the scatter plot as well, uh, you can do that. Okay, so uh, this is another video from uh, my lab, and hopefully it's been uh, useful. Uh, the goal of these videos is to just help people become familiar with using R and all of its excellent packages and things like that uh, to uh, in their work with behavioral science.